So my lab is interested in the cell biology of the synapse, and we use the nematode C. elegans to understand that and look at single synapses in, in single neurons in the living animal and examine how synapses are formed and how the synaptic cell biology is sustained to sustain the behavior of the animal. Suri Jang in my lab and graduate student Jessica Nelson made a surprising discovery that glycolytic proteins were necessary to sustain the synaptic vesicle cycle. And the way that they made that discovery is that when they were mounting the animals and doing a forward genetic screen, they observed that animals that were mounted for some period of time were becoming hypoxic. It got really interesting to us when we looked at the subcellular localization of these glycolytic proteins. And what was cool about it was that they initially start out diffusely localized throughout the entire neuron, but under acute energy stress, such as hypoxia or neuronal stimulation, they are forming together, they were coming together and forming these clusters near presynaptic sites. We were expecting them to be diffusely localized throughout the cytosol as had been previously reported, and indeed that's how they looked in animals that were unstressed energetically. But in animals in which we um, induce energetic stress, they observed that the glycolytic proteins actually were clustered near presynaptic sites where they were powering synaptic function. If you disrupt the localization of the glycolytic proteins, you actually then disrupt the function of the synapse and the synaptic vesicle cycle. And that has consequences for the behavior of the animal. The genetic screen was done by mounting the worms on a microscope slide with a cover slip on top. Wild type animals have nicely punctate synaptic vesicle pattern as illustrated here. But with the glycolytic mutant, synaptic vesicle proteins become diffusely distributed over a short period of time. And we found that the cover slip was causing hypoxia and thus causing this mutant phenotype. We then through various experiments identified that this diffuse synaptic vesicle protein phenotype was due to a defect in synaptic vesicle cycling. So our current model is that glycolytic proteins are coming together and forming metabolic microcompartments to fuel synaptic function in times of energy stress. Because neurons not only form one synaptic connections, but numerous synaptic connections. And those synaptic connections or activity can be highly varying depending on different environment and stimulus. Such dynamic recruitment of glycolytic machineries may be a way for neurons to deal with its diverse energetic needs. Biochemists have a long hypothesized for over 40 years that glycolytic proteins must be uh, interacting with each other and forming a complex that produces energy at fast rates. That was based on in vitro evidence, biochemical evidence, but the in vivo evidence for the formation of those complexes was lacking. And now we're able to show that in living animals, in functioning cells, these complexes actually do form to sustain synaptic function.